Hey guys, this is Caesar with Nursing School Made Easy. Today's lecture is going to be on flail chest. <clears throat> um, you should have seen a couple of images of some ribs. Again, that's a CT chest with 3D reconstruction. Again, just pay attention and focus on the ribs. Okay, so we have, let's make a real quick drawing here. We have the thoracic cavity. And remember that inside your thoracic cavity, you're going to have your lungs. Just real brief A and P here. Okay. So, you have thoracic cavity, you have your lining, your lungs, you have your pleural space. And you have ribs. Again, the ribs are supposed to protect the chest, your lungs, your heart. So just flip back to those images that I posted. Well, <clears throat> in a flail chest, you have your ribs. Well, let me take a step back. A few years ago, I had a patient come in through the ER. Now this patient, very, very, very large man. Uh, I'd say about 6'5", 350 pounds. He was out, this was during the summer, he was riding his four-wheeler. He decided to go up a hill. And there was too much weight on his four-wheeler, so what ended up happening is he tipped backwards and the four-wheeler landed on his chest crushed his chest, fractured his uh, ribs, more importantly called, it caused something called a flail chest. Now what that is, is essentially fractured ribs, but in multiple locations, and it's usually more than one rib. So we have two or more ribs being fractured in two or more locations. So we'll take our ribs here, and we'll say that there was a fracture here, and a fracture, excuse me, fracture here and here. And we're talking about how it's more than two ribs that are typically fractured. Okay, so we'll say that this area here was also fractured. And we'll say that these three ribs were fractured. So what ends up happening is, again, these ribs are fractured. So anytime the patient breathes, anytime the patient exhales or expiration occurs, this will either be sucked in or bulged, pushed out. Okay. <clears throat> now this chest movement will be uncoordinated. It will be asymmetric. So this side may be moving just fine, just like a normal uh, breathing, chest rising and falls. This, however, again, there's a weakness here. So anytime inspiration and expiration occur, this will bulge out or get sucked in. So that is essentially what a flail chest is. Again, it is just two or more ribs that are fractured in two or more locations. Again, the chest wall cannot provide appropriate support because again, these are all fractured. Now, <clears throat> what are some interventions? Number one, O2 therapy. <clears throat> Again, we talked about how the breathing, how the chest um, movement will be uncoordinated and asymmetric. You must understand that the chest movement will be uncoordinated and asymmetric, okay? 
so that is going to impede the amount of oxygen exchange resulting in decreased O2 saturation levels which is why you will need the O2 therapy the other thing that you must provide for your patient is adequate pain control <clears throat> again this pain control can either be IV or PO I am depending on what the physician decides to prescribe now depending on how severe the fractures are mechanical ventilation may be required now for the patient that I was taking care of <clears throat> He had this multiple fractures, these multiple fractures occurring, but what was done for him was just mainly pain control. And the other thing is time for these bones to heal. In most cases, um, surgery will not be performed. In fact, I have never seen any surgery on ribs performed. That's not to say it's not, it will never occur, but it's just very, very unlikely because if you go in and open up the chest cavity, you run into very, very um, likelihoods of causing other problems, complete collapse of the lung, infections. So for that reason, patients are just told to let these heal on their own, which again goes to making sure that they have adequate pain control. Now, again, in a different lecture, we talked about fractured ribs, how you want to make sure that they use their IS, make sure that they cough, deep breathe, to prevent atelectasis, to prevent pneumonias. Now, again, here you have fractured ribs, um, which again makes it very, very likely for these patients to have a pneumo. Okay, so you always also want to be, again, checking their O2 sats, but Assessing for that dyspnea, okay, is it getting worse? If so, again, you would check their O2. You would always assess first. That's one of the very, very first things that you need to learn to do is assess, in this case, their O2 saturation levels, especially if you're giving IV pain medication, okay?